my name is Paul Holmes. I'm an RF and microwave FAE from the Engineering and Technology Group within Anritsu EMEA. Today I'm going to give a very brief overview of the Shockline family and then focus on the MS46524B Shockline VNA and do a quick demonstration on time domain. So here's an overview of the family. On the right hand side you can see the USB type uh, VNAs, uh, the 121B which are one ports, 150 kilohertz. Uh, to 6 gigahertz. Then we have the 122B, which is a two port passive VNA and driven by an external PC. And then the 322B, which goes up to 43.5 gigahertz and again has an internal PC, but you just use an external monitor, uh, keyboard, and mouse to drive these. And on the left hand side, we have the Shockline performance type VNAs, two port or four port up to 43.5 gigs. And then we have a banded E-band specific uh, network analyzer with integrated uh, uh, waveguide modules and cables. This is the 522B-082 E-band network analyzer. And then these are supported by uh, SmartCal, uh, AutoCal uh, calibration fixtures. So some of the typical applications for the 524B is differential S parameter measurements advanced time domain measurements allowing you to give skew and eye diagram capability it's used in antenna testing both near field and far field and within chambers and also has applications within radar and microwave backhaul for system integration applications it has very fast suites of very good throughput outstanding dynamic range up to 140 dbs and high output power for interconnect flexibility so here we have the Anritsu MS46524B Shockline VNA. This is a four port VNA, has 16 channels, 20,000 data points, has a wide dynamic range of up to 140 dB, which uh, shortened test time and increased throughput, uh, all backed by a standard three year warranty. On the rear panel, we have LAN connectivity and is supported by all popular automation platforms. So first of all, before we do any measurements, we need to do an error correction or a calibration. So we're going to do a full four port manual calibration using time domain calibration setup menu. Because we want to do some time domain low pass measurements, we need to set the instrument up so that the start frequency is harmonically related to the stop frequency. So we access the calibration menu. up here. Under Calibrate it brings up a low pass time domain cal. So this is what we want, low pass time domain cal. Once we've selected that it brings up a little wizard. So here we have 43.5 megahertz and a stop of 43.5 gigahertz. Automatically we have a thousand data points available to us. We are going to do a manual cal and the manual cal options are here. We select four port under here. We're going to do a short open load and through in a coaxial medium. Under the edit cal parameters, this is where we select our throughs and our port status. So we are going to use and select our calibration kit, which is a TOSLKF50. We are going to select all throughs to be the same. If we click here, the standard information. So now we've set up our four ports and we're going to use the same through. All of these are set to the same. If you have a different calibration kit you want to use, they're selectable under here and predefined. Or you can use user defined. So as long as you know the calibration coefficients, you can enter them here. But we're going to carry on with TSLKF50 and press OK. And then we shall apply and then apply and then perform cal. So on the right hand side of the screen, it now tells us the devices that we need to calibrate. It's asking us to, on each of the ports, to put reflective device, and you can do this in any order. So I select port one reflective devices, and it gives me a choice of open short load. So I can do that in any order. So I'm gonna start with open, and then you do that for all four ports.
And then finally, once I've done all four ports, it's asking me to do a through reciprocal between one and two, one and three, one and four, and three and four. So I'll just do those right now. Finally, between three and four, I'll just do three and four. I've connected three and four up. Once it's done its correction, there'll be a message come on the display. Please click the done button to complete the calibration. So we click OK and we press the done button down here. And once we've done that, you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, it's gone green and it says core for corrected. So once you've done your error correction, you can save your setup and calibration under the file menu here, file, save data, or save setup. So save setup, and then it will give you an opportunity to save either via USB stick or via the internal memory of the PC. Okay, so now we've done our error correction. Now we're gonna do a time domain measurement with some gating. And we're gonna measure a BT standard. So a BT standard has 50 25 50 line with 25 ohms in the middle so now I change in time domains to look at S11 and I open up the time domain menu on here and the measurement setup which will bring me up another menu so under here is where I change my response and trace definition so I'm in domain here and I want to change this to time domain low pass I want to change my dielectric value to 3.55. The board that I was using earlier has a dielectric value of 3.55. So 3.55, enter. My response, we're using S11 and we're looking at L1, S11 in LogMag. Apply and OK. So now we need to set up the range. So I'll set the range at start of minus five centimeters and a stop of plus 25 centimeters. So now it's time to connect my BT standard. So I'm using ports one and two. So now we're all connected up, we need to define our trace. So we do that response and trace definition and we're interested in impedance. We want to see the change in impedance of the BT standard. So we go to impedance and real. Apply, okay. And it jumps off the screen because the reference is at zero. We need to change that to 50 to bring that into the middle. Now we can check this by using markers. So with the marker, we'll turn marker one on and we can drag that across here to something like that and then we'll have a reference marker and we'll drag the reference marker to in between the peak and the trough of the first discontinuity and you can see up here 7.2 which is halfway in between a 25 ohm section in the middle of the board so one thing that is available with the, the VNAs is the, the setup. We can alter the trace thickness and we can also alter the font types and the size of the markers uh, on the display. Okay, so now we're in impulse mode. Let's have a look at what it looks like in step mode. So we open our wizard again, domain, impulse, we change this to step, we apply, okay, so here, you can see the 25 ohm uh, center of the BT standard. So we want to actually gate that out and see what it looks like if we can gate that out. So we go to our gate setup and we put the center of the gate round about 7.2 centimeters. Display. 
display, we apply, okay. So our gate, the center of the gate is round here. The other thing we need to do is we need to have a span of five centimeters either side. Five centimeters, apply, okay. So we're only going around this portion here. So once we've set up our gate, we've displayed the gate, now we need to turn on the notch, turn the gate on with the notch and apply. And now you can see that we have 50 ohms along and we've effectively gated out that 25 ohm uh, impedance. So once we've done that, we can now go to the display and we will view the trace and we'll store that to memory and we'll view data and memory so now we can see the stored trace and the live trace overwritten. So now I've saved that with it gated out what I'm going to do to see what it looks like to see how accurate that was I'm going to disconnect from here this BT standard and I'm just going to connect the two cables to a normal through line now I'm going to compare that with the save trace with the gate applied to see how they compare. So now I've connected those up we're looking at a live trace alongside the save trace and you can see that they're very comparable in between here. Now once you've done your measurements, you want to might save the data. So under File, Save the Data, and it gives you a drop-down list of all your S2P, M3P, differential files, bitmap, JPEG. So in summary, a Shockline family of VNAs delivers performance and value for testing to 92 gigahertz. Five series with seven different frequency ranges in one, two, and four port models multiple form factors and LAN or USB interfaces to fit customer needs with excellent VNA RF performance without the extra hardware features and cost. Comprehensive VNA functionality through powerful Shockline software and ideal for testing a broad range of applications from one port to multi-port devices. Via single ended and mixed mode S parameters, time domain measurements for time gating or advanced time domain for signaling integrity applications on our performance 500B series. Simple linear active device testing on our 500B performance series and ideal for production engineering and cost sensitive education applications and manual, automated or remote operation, all backed by Enrichsu worldwide support and a comprehensive three year warranty as standard.